are so honored to be your nominees. This is a people-powered campaign, and together we will chart a new way forward. A future for freedom, opportunity of optimism and faith. So to everyone in Chicago and across America, thank you. And with that, Kamala Harris accepting the Democratic Party's nomination for president last night after the roll call vote. As Harris tries to shore up support across the base, her campaign is also making a very big push to win Latino support, win back some Latino voters, and win amongst Latinos in a very big way this election. It's become a priority, especially since former President Donald Trump has shown to make real gains with the Latino support in both the 2016 and 2020 elections. Let's talk about this. Joining me right now is Frankie Miranda, the CEO and president of the Hispanic Federation, and Luis Miranda Jr., who chairs the Latino Victory Fund. He's also Lin-Manuel Lin Miranda's father. As a proud mother, I, would, I always love when I'm known just as my kid's mom, so I just wanted to throw that in. <laughs> thank you both for being here. Frankie. Thank you, thank you. Of course, of course. Frankie, the New Yorker is asking a key question this morning in a headline. I'll pose it to you. Can Kamala Harris's campaign solve the Latino turnout problem? Do you think well, she can? Uh, according to the poll that the Hispanic Federation and Latino Victory Foundation have done just right after uh, it was announced the VP choice for Kamala Harris and Walt's ticket, uh, we took a snapshot of the Latino community across the country, and we saw that enthusiasm and interest in the election, the presidential election, has skyrocketed. This is something that we were hearing on the street with, through our canvassers and our organizations right after the announcement. And we can confirm now that more than 70% of Latinos are committed to go out and vote and more than 52% are basically saying that they are more enthusiastic about what is happening. So right now it's up to the campaign to really clarify many of the questions that they have, but the enthusiasm is there and the attention is there. It, and and it's, it's interesting to note that in only three weeks, uh, Kamala Harris was able to move the pendulum from 49%, a little under half, who were ready to vote for President Biden to 59%. The magic number, the rule of thumb in Latino politics, it's that you need two thirds of Latinos to vote for a particular party. When Bush got 42% of the Latino vote, he became president. When Biden got 70% of the Latino vote, he became president. So she's very, very close to that magic two to one match. The support amongst Latinos is key. There's no ifs, ands, ors, or buts about it. There's no question. And Luis, that gets me to something you wrote back in May that is just as worthy to read uh, today as well. You wrote this for the Washington Post. Those of us who have spent a lifetime working in Latino politics find ourselves fielding a single question these days. How can Latinos even consider voting for a candidate who suggests that immigrants are poisoning the blood of our country? How do you answer that, Luis? What aspects of Donald Trump's message do you, do you find are resonating so much? Is it, is it really all about the economy? Uh, actually, I don't believe it's about the, the economy. First of all, our women, Latinas, are much smarter than us men. <laughs> they are already in the 60s supporting Kamala Harris for president. But our men, I believe, get caught in the aura of bravado that Trump presents to the world and get confused that you don't govern by saying crazy things. You govern by putting in place good policies to serve and help our communities. And I think that what Frankie said before, it's true. Now the enthusiasm, it's there. Latinos were saying in the poll that they're reading and they're learning about the campaign every day, every week. And I think that though there's still that gap among Latinas and Latinos, that it's gonna be closing in the next 11 weeks. 
Yeah. I, bipartisan agreement, nonpartisan agreement, women far uh, smarter than men. Just saying. Um, Frankie, but this uh, is absolutely. Also, <laughs> exactly. Um, this gets to a, a key question. Latinos do vote on all issues and care about all issues. But we know that there is going to be, a, amongst other issues, a focus on immigration tonight. We know where Donald Trump stands on immigration. We have also seen Republicans, uh, Democrats, especially in the last year, in, in becoming more hawkish, more aggressive, uh, more on offense when it comes to border security. Do you have a concern that there could be a view that while moving more towards, I'm just going to use the broad strokes language, more to the right on immigration and border security, that could threaten support on the left? Well, what we found on our survey is that when we asked the question about who is going to provide a humane treatment to immigrants that are already here, which candidate is going to provide a solution to a broken immigration system, which is the candidate that will represent the interests of the immigrant community, by far, Kamala Harris is coming above Donald Trump in our survey. So what we're seeing is that Latinos understand that the traits and the policies that are humane, that is about family reunification, that is about the values of our community, are trending much, much higher with Kamala Harris. This is an opportunity also because uh, during our poll, we also find that because of the short term of this new announcement, many Latinos still want to hear more about policy, policy platform for Kamala Harris tickets. So this is the opportunity to solidify that and to give some of the answers that our people are looking for. But by far, when it comes to traits and policy about our broken immigration system, Kamala Harris fares much better. And, and, and this is and, and one of the, Go ahead. One Go of the ahead. things that it's, it's also clear, it's our view as Latinos uh, for immigration. There are people who are concerned about the border. In fact, 20% of Latinos said they were concerned about what's happening in the border. But the same amount were concerned about a path to legalization for the millions who are here uh, without papers. Because we know that when Trump talks about mass deportation, he's going to round up all of us. We live in communities where you don't know who has papers and who doesn't. They're going to be looking at us by the color of our skin. And that's how they're going to make determinations. And when you've got, I mean, and, and the key question will be, and we will all see it together, is what does the turnout look like? Where does the support land? When from 2016, he was, Donald Trump had 28, obviously De Democrats had far more, but he's, you've seen this gain amongst Latino support for Republicans, specifically Donald Trump in the last two cycles, and we will see what that turnout and what that support looks like this time. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming in.